Uh, for our next segment, we have Lori Alhadef. She's joining, joining us via Skype. She lost her daughter, Alyssa, in the Parkland shooting a year ago yesterday. Welcome, Lori. Hi, Hi Lori. Hi, Lori. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I am, again, very, very sorry for your loss. Uh, you wrote such a beautiful letter uh, to your daughter that was shared on DearWorld.com. Um, Dear Alyssa Letter, I read it. It was so beautiful. Uh, can you share with us what made you write that letter? So on 214 last year, I had no control. And one year later, I wrote that letter to express my love for Alyssa and how I felt and how she was remembered. And I just wanted the world to know one year later how I was feeling and how much I love and miss Alyssa and wanted Alyssa back. Yeah, and um, again, thank you for sharing this with the world, I, yeah, I, I can't. I mean, I we're we're not married, so I, I can't imagine you know losing a family member in such a tragedy like that. Uh, what has been this year for you like? Like, how how did you cope with everything after the fact? So I used my grief as my power to make change and to be a voice for Alyssa, whose voice was silenced on two fourteen, and. I became a school safety activist right after the tragedy, and I started a nonprofit organization, Make Our Schools Safe. And our mission is to make schools safe for all kids in all schools. And through Dream Team Clubs, which can start in any school around the country, they can be a voice, the kids could be a voice for change, specifically to meet the needs of their school at their school. And to tell the adults that school safety needs to be a priority where they go to school to learn. And Lori, I, I think this is, the, you know, I want to ask a question that's on so many people's mind, which is every time a tragedy like this happens and uh, all we hear or what we over, overwhelmingly hear is what's called thoughts and prayers. Um, do you think at any point in time we're going to move past beyond that? You know, that's a great question. Yes, they say thoughts and prayers, but you know what? After 9-11, we harden our airport. We've had school shooting after school shooting after school shooting, and our schools are soft targets, and this needs to stop. We need to wake up. We need to put more money into mental health, into school hardening, and into and getting the Alyssa law passed, and these are school safety, common sense measures that we can impact and do right now in our schools. And when people say we can't do anything, I'm sorry, we can and we must. Lori, I know that uh, when we look at the reports, there was in-depth uh, reporting and analysis. There's been reporting at the federal level, state and local level about the multiple failures. There were, as I understand it, something like 45 uh, notifications uh, of this deranged individual. I don't, I don't even want to say his name. I know President Trump has said he's encouraged the media to be responsible and not basically give glory or attention to these heinous murderers by repeating their name and, and giving them all sorts of attention. Um, but the fact is that this deranged individual had been reported uh, to the FBI multiple times, including a tip, uh, I believe, that the uh, that someone had called the FBI to inform them that this individual planned to do a shooting that very day, and nothing happened with that warning. So uh, in terms of you know, yes, school safety and the fact that he was able to basically leave his Uber and almost start shooting immediately within a matter of minutes. Um, there was no barrier for him to enter the side door of the school. Um, this was a failure of school security. But it seemed that it was also a failure on the part of the FBI and the local police that the, the local responders didn't have the courage to go in. So um, w what's the solution for, for those types of systemic failures? So first of all, Carrie, I want to say is what we we don't say the shooter's name. We say the killer of Alyssa Alhadeb or one of the other 16 names. But you are right. There were so many failures from the FBI to BSO to the school district. And unfortunately, we had a culture of leniency 
and the ball was dropped. And right now the FBI has worked on their communication systems to make sure that these tips are, are not failed. And the other thing is, is that people need to report things, see something, say something, send something, and law enforcement will do something. So there's different reporting apps like Safer Watch that in Fortified Florida, and these apps are going to save lives. They already are. But in terms of the reporting, it seemed that there was a lot of reporting around him. So what would have been the connection then to, to people did their job? They did report it. So unfortunately, nothing was done, and, and that led to the death of 17. But we need to move forward from here on and do the right thing now. And I know that people are being responsible and being accountable. And when these tips come in, they are looking into them and they are reporting them and do, they're doing something about them. And when you say that you're going to shoot up a school in Florida, they, it is a felony and you will be arrested. Yeah, Lori, I, I can't imagine how you feel every time you go on TV, you go on all the cable shows uh, with all of our friends. Um, it, it must be so painful for you to just talk about it and every all the pundits, all the pundits on TV talking about this. But at the end of the day, it doesn't immediately affect their lives. And, uh, you know, that's your whole world. Um, I've seen you saying repeatedly, I would take all the bullets for you. And you said that to your daughter, Alyssa. And I actually saw a picture of you um, with words uh, written on your arms. Um, can you tell us about that a little bit more? On that day, I, I ran to the school. I got a message. Um, text message, shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School, kids running and jumping the fence. And I, I drove my car to the school as quickly as possible and drove onto a sidewalk and started running towards the school. And I would have ran into that school and taken the bullets for Alyssa, but I was blocked by law enforcement. Um, just recently, I got a tattoo on my arm saying, live for Alyssa and when I w it was very painful, but when I was getting that tattoo, that pain, I was trying to take away the pain from Alyssa when she was shot 10 times on 214. And uh, Lori, before we let you go, which we don't really want to, um, what do you say to all the other parents who lost their kids? Because they're out there. I would say you have to be a voice for change. Use your voice as your power and talk to your legislators and try to get the Alyssa law passed in your state. And the Alyssa law is a panic alarm, a panic button that teachers will wear around their neck to, to automatically connect with law enforcement so they can come in and take down the threat. And be your voice and let that be your power. And Lori, I know you've advocated for uh, additional security measures, including bulletproof glass and, and other initiatives at schools. What's been the response and the process to advocate for that? You know, it's, it's layers and layers of protection from bulletproof glass to metal detectors to the panic button uh, to single point entry, bulletproof backpacks, stop the bleed kits with training and more money for mental health starting in elementary school. We need to go about this in all different ways with layers and layers of protection. And the needs for each school around the country is different depending on, on your school. And you need to get a school safety assessment done specifically to meet the needs of your school. Sure, Lori. And also in terms of the, you mentioned mental health. At the top of the show, uh, I mentioned a charity called Rachel's Challenge. Have you worked with them? Are you familiar with them? They're an anti-bullying uh, curriculum that's been, I believe, in, taught to three million school children. And reports are that they've prevented seven school shootings and prevent about 150 suicides every year uh, because it teaches the students to trust each other and to, to prevent bullying. Yes, yeah, so I met with Rachel's brother and absolutely, we need to have more anti-bullying, and I, I support them. And, you know, this we need to go about this, and we need the help of everyone. Together, we are stronger, and we need to make this happen with all of us working at this from the mental health and all the different aspects.
because we can make our schools safe and we will make our schools safe. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lori, for joining us. We Thank really you so appreciate much. it and all the best to your family. Thank you, Carrie and Julia. And 